So here we have two different tree species. Um, one is the western redbud here on the left hand side, family Fabaceae, it's native, and this would be found in the dry, very dry upland areas, not near the wetland itself. And then another one that can be found in the upland and the some of the kind of mid-riparian zone. It, it's not a riparian species per se, but it can be found in riparian forests. And this is Sambucus nigra or Sambucus mexicana. Um, I'm not able to tell the difference between the two. The point is it's a native Sambucus elderberry, has these large umbel inflorescences. Uh, the west Western redbud has already flowered out. It flowers out pretty early in, in um, February and March. But Sambucus just starts to go out in late April. And it has, once the berries start to form, they, they form about uh, mini blueberry sized berries that are great habitat for birds. So here's a nat another native species. By the way, if I don't mention um, if the plant is native or non native, just assume that it's native. So here's a. It's actually considered a vine. This is Rosa Californica, California wild rose. And it has these really beautiful pink flowers here. And it serves as habitat for pollinators, but also for birds. They love to go in the underbrush here and nest. And the pomes, which are the fruiting body of the rose family, serve as a source of food. So it's difficult to see from this shot because we're along the screening fence, but birds love to go in the underbrush there. So right in front of us here, we not only have the perimeter fence itself to keep people out of the lower part of the wetland, but I wanted to show you Populus fremontii, Fremont's cottonwood, right in front of me here. And I'll zoom in and show you the leaves. But this gives you an idea of how tall this tree is in just 15 or 20 years. So in the poplar genus, its leaves look pretty similar to quaking aspen or poplar. And this is that tree that has a pretty narrow recruitment zone, so you're going to find it on the edge of the wetland. And it is native. So again, we're up here, there in between us is the grassland and the fence to the wetland. And we have a swath here of red willow, Salix levigata. And this would be found in the wetland area um, along the fringes, but even down into the water itself. So it has a little bit more tolerance for water than cottonwood does. So right in front of us here is a smaller Salix levigata individual. And here's many of them lined up because they were planted along these lines and on the fringes. In the distance there is a cottonwood, but compare that to what this willow looks like. So we're here on the walkway and I'm going to show you a uh, one of the horticultural plants just as an example of how it can provide habitat for pollinators. So this is Lonicera and it's it is non-native. It's a horticultural plant. And here we're gonna zoom in on the flowers, and if you were here, the aroma would be just incredible. It's a very sweet smell because they are in full bloom. There are these white and orange flowers all over it. The common name for this is honeysuckle. So this provides some great habitat for pollinators. It's nice to look at. It forms a pretty vigorous vine. It's not invasive. And so this is something that could be used as vegetative screening along a pathway. Here's a native tree that you would find in the upland area, Aesculus californica, California buckeye. And now it's in season, I can show you the banana flowers. So it has these um, long inflorescences that are a combination of many flowers. So notice how there, there are dozens of flowers just on one inflorescence. This would be in the upland. It's native. And it can be found even in very dry, hot systems. Okay, so another very important species for your wetland would be Salix exigua. Salix exigua is called sandbar willow. It has sage-colored leaves. And it's found in the wettest areas of the wetland. It's native. That is, 
Salix exigua. We have another upland species here. Um, this is native, and it's Bacharis pilularis, coyote brush. Coyote brush is great habitat for pollinators and birds. Um, for pollinators, because like bees, because it has uh, great flowers in the spring, white flowers. And then for birds, because it forms these dense brush. Um, we can't see that dense brush quite as much here, just because of the nature of the site and how it grows here. But usually it forms dense clumps of brush that birds can make nests under and retreat for cover. I wanted to show you uh, of one of the native vines, and that is Vitis californica. California grape and this can be found in riparian ecosystems. It actually is rooted over here on the left just below the fence there you can see all the larger vines coming up and it goes to the right of the camera and to the left of the camera up into the canopy here and it's actually found way up here in the trees. It can make its way tens of feet high in the trees. Right here we have a black walnut, which is Juglans hinzii. You would be familiar from uh, Lab 3 with this species because it we compared the leaves of this to Ailanthus, and this is n native, we think. So notice the pinnately compound leaves, if you recall. This is a small, very small tree. Um, it's pretty young, but these turn into pretty neat majestic trees that you'll find on the uplands uh, in the mid riparian zone so it might be considered a riparian species in some ways but it can be found in grasslands and woodlands as well. I wanted to point out an um, interesting phenomenon to you and notice that the grass is different on this side of the fence versus that side. You might think, oh they're different species. They're actually not. Um, on this side of the fence is the same as that side. It's Muhlenbergia and that's deer grass. Um, on both sides. On this side, the difference is that it's been mowed down. In the wetland itself, it's not mowed down. Why might that be? It might be partly due to uh, fire risk. Try to, trying to reduce the fire risk on the side closest to the residences, but trying to maximize the habitat value inside the wetland itself. So you'll find the um, dead stalks from the previous year. And it's a perennial bunch grass, so it actually lives more than one year. So the stalks from this year's plants, uh, last year's growth is um, on the other side of the fence sticking up, but this side it's all been mowed down and now it's just new growth from those same, from the same plants. Another one of the species out here at West Ponds is California sycamore, and this is a riparian species. It is Platanus and California sycamore is found in the riparian forest area and the uplands. So it doesn't like really wet soils, but it, it does like to be wet. Uh, the leaves themselves are palmately compound and pretty distinct, and it has these neat little uh, fruiting bodies. Now here we are again. We find ourselves continuing to return to Corcus lobata, which is valley oak. So right in front of us here is a smaller valley oak tree. And this is native. And you would find this in the upland area. It's found in uh, riparian systems, but on the uplands themselves. 